Hello and welcome back. I know it's been a while since the last video, more than six months, and for that I want to apologize and I want to thank all of you for the support and for subscribing even though I've stopped uploading for a long time. But there is a reason, I won't bore you with the details but long story short, my old PC died right after I made the Red Dead Redemption Part 2 video. And I had to replace it of course, so I got myself a new rig without a GPU which has a Ryzen 5 3500X. And thanks to the current GPU market situation, it took me 6 months, 5 months I guess, to get a graphics card at a reasonable price. So I got an AMD RX 480 4GB for around $180. If you want to know all the details about my new PC, I'll leave everything down at the description. But that's not why I am here today. Today I'm here to give you another optimization guide, this time for Resident Evil Village. So without any further ado, let us begin. This video will be a little different compared to my old videos. Instead of giving a recommended settings for a specific GPU like I did before with the 1050 Ti, I'll give you the settings you should tweak to get the best performance and visuals no matter what GPU you have. As you know Resident Evil Village, just like Resident Evil 7, the remix of 213 before it, uses the RE engine from Capcom, and as a result it's a very well optimized game and offer good visuals even at the lowest settings, but the game has one big problem which is VRAM, the game consumes a lot of VRAM and at 1080p you need at least 4GB for a smooth experience. And here where I will give you my first recommendation. The first graphic settings you should keep an eye on is texture quality. This one can have a significant impact on your experience. If you have 4GB of VRAM, use high 0.5 or 1 GB and don't go above 1 GB. If you have 3 GB of VRAM, use medium 0.5 or low. And if you have 6 GB of VRAM, you can use high 3 GB or 2 GB. And if you have of course 8 GB, you can go a little bit above that. Next we have texture filter quality, with 5 options, medium, trilinear, and then high, anisotropic, x2, x4, x8, and then x16. As you can see here, medium looks rough, I don't recommend using it, use high x2 instead, since you'll have the same performance, but superior visuals. x4 looks even better, but you'll lose around 2% of your performance. If you have enough GPU power to spare, you can use X8. X16 is just a waste, especially if you're playing a 1080p with less than maximum texture quality. You won't notice any difference compared to X8, and you lose around 5% compared to medium or X4. The next one is mesh quality, which has no impact on performance, and the only scene where I've noticed any difference is here where the stitching affect the shape of this ammunition box when using max. But what's the point if you're gonna pick the ammo and it will disappear from the scene anyway? Okay, just kidding. Now my recommendation here is to use low. You're gonna say why use the low instead of max. So maybe the stitching affects CPU performance. It didn't affect my CPU, but if you have a weak CPU or a weaker CPU, I really recommend use the low just to be safe. Next we have three options and ambient occlusion. We have off, SSAO and fidelity effect CACAO. Here by going from off to SSAO, we lost 6% of our frame rates. And by going to CACAO, we lost nearly 10%. Not only that, but CACAO also consume more VRAM. So here just use SSAO and if you really need those extra frames, turn it off because even when off, the game still looks great and you still get some soft shadows from objects. Next we have screen space reflections or SSR with two options on or off. 
Unfortunately, the RE engine still suffer from broken SSR. Like Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake before, reflection looks broken, as you can see here. And by turning on SSR, you lose around 9% of your performance. In my opinion, SSR doesn't look great, and 9% is too much, so I recommend turning this one off. Next we have a big one, which is volumetric light and quality with 4 options, off, low, medium and high. This setting mostly affects the resolution and quality of light shafts throughout the game. In this scene here, since I'm not moving, it will be really hard to spot the difference in quality between low, medium and high. But here, if I move the camera, you can clearly see the pixelated light shafts are low and slightly less in medium. Now back to the previous scene, we can see that this setting really has big performance impact. Going from off to low, we lost around 7% of our frame rates, to medium 10%, and to high a massive 25%. So here I recommend low if you really care about light shafts. If you don't care, you can turn it off completely and you will gain around 7% of your frame rates. Another big one is shadow quality. We have four options here, low, mid, high, and max. This setting affects mainly the resolution of shadows in the game. As you can see in this scene, low is a big hit to visual and have a very low resolution. Mid looks fine with 5% hit, but high looks even better with almost identical performance. Max is too much and clearly aimed for high end GPU since it has a massive 29% hit. But if you pay attention, you can see the shadow also affect the VRAM. Here I recommend high and if you don't have enough VRAM and you're facing a lot of FPS drops, then low is the optimal one for you. Next is contact shadow with two options on and off. This setting adds some subtle shadows when two objects are near to each other. It's a form of ambient occlusion, but it only works on some objects. Here you can see that with this setting, we got some soft shadow under this chair. Performance wise, there is no difference between on and off. So I recommend leaving this one on, especially if you turned off ambient occlusion. Another shadow setting is shadow cache with two options on and off. This one is really helpful. It massively increased the frame rates by around 12% at this scene without any change to shadow's quality. So I highly recommend leaving this one on, but keep in mind that you might get some more VRAM or RAM usage with this option. Next we have depth of field with two options on and off. This one adds some focus to the nearest object and some blur to the distance one, or vice versa similar to cameras. As you can see during here during gameplay, this setting doesn't affect the performance that much with around 2% hit, but during cutscenes the hit increased to around 5% and might get higher on heavier scenes. I recommend leaving this one on since it doesn't affect the performance that much during gameplay. And the biggest and the last setting that matter is render mode, with two options, normal and interlaced. So the GPU with interlaced, instead of rendering all the pixels at a higher quality, it renders some of the pixels at a higher quality and the rest at a lower quality. This one is similar to checkerboard rendering on the PS4 Pro. And the console version of Resident Evil Village, even PS5 and Series X, use this method to reach 60 FPS. But those consoles use a very high base resolution with this technique. And at 1080p, in my opinion, the image with interlaced looks really bad and full of jagged edges. So this one must be your last resource to get some performance. If you did everything and still can get to your target FPS, then use interlaced since it increased the performance by around 30%. So during the video, you might have noticed that I've skipped some settings. I did that because on one hand, Bloom, Lens Flare, Lens Distortion and Fidelity Effects CES are purely down to personal preference and don't have any performance impact. And on the other hand, anti-aliasing in this game doesn't work properly. And no matter what option you choose, TAA or TAA plus FXAA, you'll get a lot of aliasing and jagged edges even at a higher resolution than 1080p.
So to summarize, the settings that have the biggest impact on performance are volumetric light and quality, shadow quality, shadow cache, and render mode. First, start with texture quality and choose the option suitable to your GPU VRAM. Then move to the setting I mentioned and leave render mode as your last resource. After that, tweak the other settings and return to render mode only if your performance is below your target FPS. So that was it. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe and hit that bell if you want to see more similar videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.